Let me count. It's in good. And it's in big hit too. Though. Hi guys, I'm Kezi along with Chef Jason and you're watching How To Foodie Nation. Today, we're in the mood for a sweet treat. So Chef is going to be showing all us home cooks how to make Trini sponge cake. Let's get baking. Baking, you know we don't really do too much of that. So we're going to be doing something sweet for the people, as mentioned. And Trini sponge cake is that quintessential dessert that your auntie, your, your granny, granny, who else? Any? I think anybody. Your tante and nana. Oh, like your neighbor. <laughs> is it birthday? I'll make a sponge cake. Mm -hmm. Growing yeah. up, my granny made me a sponge cake every single birthday. She's so sweet. I know my aunt makes it and she has uh, fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. And those yellow eggs. And when you put them in yeah. the cake, the pigmentation, color comes out. Just yellow. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that today. So tell me what we're doing. Right. So we have uh, dry ingredients okay. and wet ingredients to make this cake. Okay. So I'm going to get started with the dry stuff and you mm -hmm. can handle the wet stuff. Sure. So first, Let's do this. So I have some flour here. Right. So I want to spice it up a little bit. So we're going to go with cinnamon. And cinnamon is just that uh, quintessential spice that we always use inside when you're doing sweet A treats. nice warm. Yes, it's very holiday-like. Mm -hmm. Cardamom, now this is optional, also known as elaichi, but okay. I particularly like this. I'm okay. going to omit it. We're going with some baking powder. Yes, baking powder is important in a cake. We need that rice, that proof. Okay. And that's what's going to give it that nice airy consistency. Pillowy. Pillowy consistency. <laughs> you don't know hard sponge cake. A dry sponge cake. Oh, Parallel sponge cake. A nice home style sponge cake. Mm -hmm. Salt. Yes. Might be a little weird, but the salt. salt actually brings back the neutral flavor to your palate. So, so it balances it? It does balance it. So when you taste something sweet and then mm -hmm. you get a little bit of salt inside there, mm -hmm. you're going to say yes. This is definitely a sweet aspect here because okay. the salt brings back that neutral vibe. Okay. Baking soda. Right, so baking powder first, then baking soda. And this reacts with the baking powder to so help create that rise also. Okay. So great leavening agents that we have inside here. We get what's coming on. Right. All right. So, nutmeg. You're about to throw it away. I'm nearly, nearly full. All right, so this is local nutmeg. This is from mm -hmm. Toko. Mm -hmm. So it comes in this pot or the shell. Another spice. And what you want to essentially do is just crack the shell. So we go. Okay. When you do that, it opens out like that. Ah. A little seed inside, huh? Oh, it's a little baby. It smells good. You want to try to grate it? Yeah. It's really good. So we have this little grater here. Chef. Chef. Where you it's get a this? Minute, it's a minute. To, that is the greatest grater that you would put. Yeah. This is a nutmeg size <laughs> grater. So you want to go inside there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just start to mix it. Oh, you just want to add a little bit. Nutmeg goes a very long way. You actually, too much nutmeg is a hallucinant. Okay. It can make you like producing it. So, but so a, little bit, a, little a little more? more a little more. Mm -hmm. Give me a little more love inside it. We want to mix up our dry ingredients. And the best way to do it is just like this, when you freshly grate it. So yeah. you get the essence of the spice. That's and beautiful, Kels. Mm -hmm. You're getting it, right? Yeah, it's so good. And nutmeg so oil, good. nutmeg spice, all these are great things that we have in the Caribbean to use. All right, so we're okay. going to mix that up. So we have that dry. under control. Mm -hmm. Wet ingredients, you want yes. to do this? Yes, of course. All right, so I need you to take the butter out. We have right. some butter, we're going to put it into the bowl, use a spatula. Okay. I have room temperature butter here right now, so it's nice softened. Soft. It's very important. Do not use butter out of the fridge. Why not? Because when time to cream this with the sugar, it will get plumpy. Okay. So you want the butter to be friendly right now. All right, so you hang to, on to this to me. To absorb the sugar nicely. <laughs> put the sugar inside. So sugar nice. Put that sweetness inside there. Wonderful. Shakey, shake, shake. So this is white sugar. You could use brown sugar, but I find the white sugar pushes a beautiful uh, golden color. Okay. Okay. The brown sugar tends to tame the cake a little bit of a tinge. Okay. You need to get that hand mixer out. Mix time. And beat it on high. You want to go essentially okay. for about five to six minutes. Mm -hmm. The longer you do this, the creamier, the consistency of the cake is going to take on. Okay. The light and airy, and you're going to get a perfect level. Let's okay. do this. Go ahead. All right. So Kezia insisted that she do it for like seven minutes. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be extra pretty. I want it to be perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Let me do a little bit of clean up here, as you can see, it flat up a lot, and that's very important. Again, keep on cleaning the sides. Yeah. All that is good stuff in the cake. Okay. So what we need to do now. Add the eggs okay. and I'm going to be adding one at a time. Why one at a time? You just don't want to throw all inside there. Mm -hmm. The eggs could curdle, they could get mixed up, it could get separate. Okay. So you just want to put one at a time to allow the butter to just be uh, welcome it. Okay. Just take it. So let's go. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. So as you can see, it's nice and wet already. Mm -hmm. So we have our eggs inside there, our sugar, and of course our butter. Yes. It's creamy. It's time to add some flavor inside there. What flavors are we using? So we're going to add a little bit of vanilla essence. Mm -hmm. And that's just more or less very common when making a good sponge cake. Of course. All right. And here in Trinidad Tobago, the orange zest and a little bit of juice yeah. helps to bring in those orange or citrus profiles. Very important. And okay. I mean, we're going to add some zest inside there. So this is zest and orange juice? Yes, the zest we're going to add because okay. the zest contains a lot of essential oils of the orange. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, the zest is everything. The zest is everything, you know? Sure. You have to add the zest inside there. So you put that. In addition to putting that, what we're going to do is use the same orange and cut it open. And, and take the juice from here. Correct. Makes sense. Because, I mean, why not, right? Using the orange. Just we use don't it waste the most, in this the kitchen. Most, the most organic one. And you're going to be surprised how great the zest and the juice is going to change the flavor profiles in this cake. Okay. All right, so we have that there. Right. Just clean on the back. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I just more or less cut the orange in half. Pull it up like that, so you just catch your seeds. Mm -hmm. And you're aiming for maybe like about two tablespoons of juice inside there. I could um get an extra for that orange though. Cause yeah, no. I mean, that I'm, is mine. We not wasting. Why are you like that, Fogel? <sighs> Don't share, boy. <laughs> All right, so what you're gonna do is continue mixing, mix up again, mix it together to bring in those flavors. Beautiful. Right. So, being that we added that citrus earlier on, mm -hmm. we're gonna add some milk inside there. Chef, I'm getting that orange smell coming it's back just, at me. It's just level flavor. Mm -hmm. Fusion is amazing. So, milk. So, the milk. Now, the citrus is gonna react with the milk. It's gonna be almost kind of like buttermilk. Okay. So, you're gonna get an extremely tender and moist cake. So, go ahead, put it on. I'll add a little bit of time as you go. Okie dokie. Immediately, you're seeing that the acid yeah. from the orange juice is starting to more or less uh, create some precipitation, and that's the same phenomenon that occurs when you add buttermilk to a cake. It okay. starts to create those little lumps, and that's good. So, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna dry. add the dry ingredients now mm -hmm. to it, and you're gonna put it in two or three portions inside there at a time. Okay. So, I want you to put it on the machine. Sure. And we're gonna go again. Man. I gotta get you a little scrape. Actually, at this point in time, what mm -hmm. you could actually do is finish it by hand. Okay. So we could just take our spatula like that and just continue the fold in action and take that, move that brown. Now, Chef, why did we add the wet ingredients and dry ingredients separately? Why didn't we just put everything together? It just wouldn't combine. What's going on in there is that you have to allow the wet ingredients to mm -hmm. suck up the dry. Okay. And if you do it all in one, you end up with clumps. Okay. Right? So you allow it a little bit of time to mm -hmm. allow it to temper the butter to bring it to similar conditions. Okay. All right? Just don't just drop it. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, our cake butter is coming together really nicely. Mm -hmm. And as I'm finishing it by hand, you have more control because sometimes it splatters up a little bit. Yeah. So check that out. That's beautiful. And let's see what you want. Nice and smooth consistency. I'm getting the citrus. Good. I'm getting the vanilla with mm -hmm. the orange juice inside there. Beautiful color. Sponge cake. Looking oven ready. I mean, you could put other spices inside here. You could put tonka bean, you could put minced ginger. Okay. Play around with it. Once you master this fundamental recipe, mm -hmm. you pretty much could, you know, play around with it. Okay. So what I want to do now is we're going to put this in our pan and put it up to bake. Sure. So let's do that. 
Now oh, this is so silky and nice. I mean, the mm. consistency of it mm. is amazing. Look at that. It isn't good. And it's in big kit too. Though. Chef, <laughs> we had to put this in. All right, so what we have here, before we do that, mm -hmm. we have our spring cream pan, nine inch pan. I buttered on the inside of it, just rubbed it with a little bit of butter. Okay. And then I added some flour to dust it. So this is gonna help how? This is gonna prevent the cake from sticking. Okay. So as it bakes, it will release pretty well. Okay. All right, let's do this. Pour it Let inside. me help you out there. Yeah. Pour it out nicely. Mm -hmm. Look how it flows really good. You can tell it's a good butter. Silky and smooth, chef. Yes, beautiful color. Good mixing done by me. And it's all about, it made life so easy because of the creaming of the butter and the yes. sugar. Which is key in making a good cake. Clean those bowls good. Mm -hmm. Don't waste anything. No, 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 this I'm where, it. This is where grandma will start to get on bad enough. <laughs> you know when I bake cake long time, I used to lick the spatula in the bowl. Yeah, you're waiting for granny to finish so you could get whatever left in the bowl. <laughs> that was the pre-treat before the treat. Beautiful. So that's yeah. that there. Mm -hmm. So just tap the spatula again just to get some of it. And what we need to do is just settle the pan like this. Okay. So you move it like that, back and forth. So it gets even. It gets even, so you can get a nice even top. Okay. Right? And uh, we're gonna put this in the oven mm -hmm. at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Did you put the oven to preheat for me? Chef, you didn't hear the oven beep long time. So that's why things so hot around here. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready to go. All right, the sirens are blazing. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do it. 350. Well, you know, I'm, this is what I really love about this show. We are teaching people out there some of the fundamentals when it comes to some of the favorites here in Trinidad and Tobago. People like me, home cooks who need help. I'm very proud of us, but I'm mostly proud of you guys. Thank you very much. Because I whole cream in action of the sugar and mm -hmm. the butter later on, and we did everything step by step. So, I mean, anyone out there could follow this and it would yield great results. I mean, look at it. Yeah, it's it amazing. smells so good in here, like that fresh, warm, Sponge cake smell. If you love that smell, you smell a fresh cake like this video. Just mesmerized by the smell right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's beautiful. The essence, the cinnamon, the it's vanilla, all in it's there. all inside there. And I mean, great texture. It's beautiful and quintessential Trinidad and Tobago dessert, I think, to some degree. So, I know. You pick up that fork and you're ready to roll. And I was just waiting for you to do it. Okay. <laughs> Dig in, let's try this. Ooh, Ooh nice texture. I can see how it just went through there, right? Ooh. Mm. Okay, cuz mm -hmm. I remember as a young boy when we, my aunt would always bring one of these. And um, no fancy cake back then, it was mm -hmm. just simple sponge cake. And we used to mash up the cake in the ice cream. You have ice cream? That is true. We can work on that ice cream. You get some ice cream? Get that together. But you know, it has this nice, soft, buttery, nice. sticky Super. top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the whole aspect when we're making it's a good sponge moist. cake. It's not dry and brittle and brittle. I think if you make this, this is definitely one scenario where you could have your cake and eat it too. We don't ching ching. <laughs> Guys, we'd love to hear about your favorite, favorite memories of fresh sponge cake, fresh out of the oven. Is it from your granny, your uncle, your tante, your nan, and whoever? Please comment below and tell us. And if you do make this sponge cake, tell us as well. So until next time, chef. We'll see you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.